Welcome to Marthoma Church of Atlanta, VBS 2020. Join us at Camp Kilimanjaro for an epic expedition through the Book of Proverbs. Hello everyone and welcome to our first ever virtual VBS to Camp Kilimanjaro. We are so grateful to God for the safe place that he has given us to learn and explore wisdom that comes from the one true God. With so many choices that we are faced with every day, we will learn about how we can use our ears hearts tongues hands and feet to keep it in tune with god's word join us for fun songs online lessons crafts and other fun at home activities that you can complete in the safety of your own house this is a summer where we will discover vbs in a completely unique way Let's make it in a memorable one together as we begin this journey with prayer. Let's pray. Our loving Jesus, we know that you are a God who always loves us, your children dearly and boundlessly. Thank you Lord for giving us an opportunity to attend VBS this year. Lord, illumine our minds so that we may realize the love of god let the blessings of the divine spirit descend upon us and remain with us always lord we pray for all your children who attend this pbs we pray for the teachers and leaders who lead the different sessions bless us all in jesus name we pray amen Hey friends, welcome to day one of Camp Kilimanjaro Virtual VBS 2020, where we journey through Proverbs to get God's wisdom. Now, let's hear from Robin Natasha. Hey kiddos, welcome to day one of VBS. Five days of virtual VBS, five different themes. Day one, listening with your ears. Day two is about listening with your heart. Day three is about speaking with your tongue. Day four is about using your hands, and day five is about using your feet. Five days, five different themes. All right, so let's kick it off with day one. God's given us two ears, so we can listen. Listen to what? Listen to counsel and instruction, so we can be wise. That's the key theme for today: is to listen with your ears to counsel and instruction, that you may be wise. Why should you be wise? For example. What what is wisdom to even begin with, right? Wisdom is not the same as being smart. Like you can go to school and read your books and do really well in your English and your math and your science and your whatever it might be, and you can be smart, right? A doctor is very smart, but what we need is wisdom. Wisdom is knowing the difference between right and wrong, good and bad. Why should you know that difference? because only if you know that difference would you be able to always do what is right good and pleasing to God almighty god's our father in heaven we're made in the image of our father and our only job only goal in life is always to be wise and please our father in heaven so we'll talk about an example in the bible today your teachers will about a person that you all know who is the wisest person that has ever lived and his name is yep that's right solomon So Solomon was the son of King David and Solomon was going to become king. Can you imagine the pressure? All these people in Israel are looking up to Solomon and he's going to be the next king. He had all these people and all these things to do. He was feeling a lot of pressure. I bet we all feel a lot of pressure, right? So whether you're going from grade 1 to grade 2 or elementary school to middle or middle to high or high to college and even some of us are graduating from college and looking for jobs. Oh my gosh, that's scary. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of peer pressure, right? And where do I get the knowledge? And that's exactly where um Solomon was stuck as well. So God appeared to him in a dream, right? At the age of 20. How many of you guys are 20 right now? I'm pretty sure not all of you are. Many of you are much 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 younger, right? So, um at 20 years old, Solomon was feeling pressure and he said, "Lord, I am only a child." Keep in mind he was 20 years old. He knew a lot. but he knew that he was only a child 
and he needed God's wisdom. He needed to know the difference between right and wrong, good and bad, so he could be a good king that pleases God Almighty, and in doing so, also serve the people that he had in his own kingdom. So Solomon was pretty wise. He ended up writing a lot of books in the Bible, and the main one that, you will, that your teachers will talk about today is Proverbs. What's a proverb? A proverb is nothing more than a simple, wise saying. Proverb, I think Solomon wrote like 3,000 proverbs, Maybe about 500 of them are recorded in the Bible. So the dude was very, very, not just smart, wise. And we need to know the difference between smart and wise so that we can know the difference between right and wrong, which is what wise wisdom is, and we can start doing those things, okay? So we live in a time right now with uh, a lot of sources of so-called wisdom. You could turn your TV on and you could be listening to all kinds of stuff that's there, right? So some of it is, um, good entertainment, some of it is good knowledge, right? But it's not the same as wisdom. You could even uh, turn on your, whatever, your phone and be listening to music, listening to different people, celebrities and all that, talking different kinds of things. And uh, obviously you can turn your Facebook on and your Snapchat on and all these kinds of places. Just because many people are saying different things and just because that is getting viral attention and a lot of likes and a lot of that does not mean that it is coming from God. There's only one source of truth and that's in the Bible. The Word of God is always going to be the single and the only effective source of truth. So where should you be listening for counsel and instruction? Not TV, not your phone, not your friends, not anybody else, God Almighty. And that's God, whatever God Almighty wants you to do, it's all recorded in the Bible. So once again, the theme today is to listen with your ears. That's why God gave you two of them. Listen with your ears to counsel and instruction so you can be wise and you can do what is right and good and please God Almighty. All right, so have fun for the rest of today and the remaining five days of VBS. Bye-bye. Let's learn the memory verse from day one. Listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise. Let's repeat that one more time. Listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise. Proverbs 19 verse 20. Who's ready for another day of EBS? Yay! Yay! Lego, what's your favorite song? Did you just say light it up? Well, guess what? We're doing that song today. You guys excited? Let's hear it. We're so excited to hang out with you all. Let's do it. Yay. Jesus, wherever he will lead me, 
Are you all excited for VBS this year? I know this is very different this year, but we definitely miss seeing you guys. So today, I have a Malayalam song for you. Ready? Noor noor aadullo ridayan aadine meikan poi tirige varum vali onnine kaanadeyum poi. Let's do that one more time. Noor noor aadullo ridayan aadine meikan poi tirige varum vali onnine kaanadeyum poi. The next line is avan kootil nokki kandilla avidellam nokki kandilla aage sangadamayi engum kandilla അവൻ കൂട്ടിൽ നോക്കി കണ്ടില്ല അവയുടെ എല്ലാം നോക്കി കണ്ടില്ല ആകെ സങ്കടമായി എങ്ങും കണ്ടില്ല ദ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ആൻസർ ഈസ് ഒറ്റ ഒരണമല്ലേ പോയുള്ളൂ സാരമില്ലെന്നേ കൂട്ടുകാർ ചൊല്ലിയിട്ടും ഇടയന് ഉറക്കം വന്നില്ല ഒറ്റ ഒരണമല്ലേ പോയുള്ളൂ സാരമില്ലെന്നേ കൂട്ടുകാർ ചൊല്ലിയിട്ടും ഇടയന് ഉറക്കം വന്നില്ല ഒന്നെങ്കിലും കുഞ്ഞാടെ നീ എൻ്റെതല്ലേ കുഞ്ഞാടെ തള്ളിക്കളയാൻ ആകുമോ കുഞ്ഞാടെ ഒന്നെങ്കിലും കുഞ്ഞാടെ നീ എൻ്റെതല്ലേ കുഞ്ഞാടെ തള്ളിക്കളയാൻ ആകുമോ കുഞ്ഞാടെ God is good all the time and all the time God is good. Respected Achins and my dear VBS leaders and teachers, volunteers and of course our students. I'm so glad to be with all of you uh in this year's VBS from 2476 miles away. Are you all excited to be here for this year's VBS? I know this is a very different experience for each and every one of us. This is the first time I'm sure you're having a VBS online and uh, I'm sure it is quite different from your previous VBS experiences. I know this has been a strange time for all of us as we all know the world has been ridden by this coronavirus pandemic. And I know many of us have many challenges. Many of our dear ones are working on the front lines. and maybe our life has been disturbed but god is good and faithful and we need to keep our hope and our trust in him so what's this year's vbs theme 
Camp Kilimanjaro, an epic expedition through Proverbs. I was so excited when I heard this theme because the first time I'm learning about a VBS curriculum, which is specifically speaking on the book of Proverbs. And the reason why I'm so excited is because I, I think Proverbs is one of those books we oftentimes overlook. Uh, when we need some wisdom in our life, we'll turn to uh, Proverbs. When we want some guidance on what God wants, maybe we want to confess our sins. Maybe we want to give thanks to God. Maybe we're in grief and sorrow and want some comfort. We turn to the Psalms. But the book of Proverbs, what is it about? It's about teaching people like you and me how to receive God's wisdom and to use it positively, creatively, and appropriately. We all know that the Proverbs come from the wise King Solomon, who ruled Israel while it was united. And that wisdom that he shares with them, he's also sharing with us. And that is what today's theme is, to be wise, to have ears that hear and do God's word. What does it mean to hear and do God's word? Well, let's turn our Bibles to the book of Proverbs, chapter 2, verse 6. And I don't want you taking the Bible on the phone, but rather I want you to take your actual Bible. Turn to it. Turn with me, Proverbs, chapter 2, verse 6. And once you reach that, we're going to read through it together. For the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Let's look at the verse before that. I would like to include that. Verse 5. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Let's think for a minute. What does this mean? Wisdom, knowledge, understanding. What does it mean? I'm sure when you ask yourself this question, you're thinking about Maybe studying at school or reading a book, gaining some knowledge from watching TV or other sources of learning. Let me give you a short example. I grew up uh, in New York in the 1980s and 1990s. Yes, that was a long time ago. And I remember um, after school, if I needed to do a book report or uh, do work on my science fair project, I had to go to the library. I physically had to go and we didn't have any form of digital catalog. So we had to look through the book catalogs that were categorized by subject, title or author. And I remember we would have to go and manually check the encyclopedias like Encyclopedia Britannica, World Book Encyclopedia, Grolier's. And I had to spend a lot of time looking things up. But let's fast forward to 2020. We're swimming in a wealth of knowledge. Right? If you have a question, you don't ask anyone. Now you do is you just say, hey Siri or hey Google or hey Alexa. Now you ask any question and literally the answers at our, are at our fingertips. And I'm not saying the answers are correct. Just because Siri or Google, Alexa say something doesn't mean that it's always correct. But that information is at our fingertips. So we are blessed with so much knowledge, but what are we doing with it? Let's look at our personal knowledge about different things. How many of us know the sports statistics, right? Basketball players, their stats, or baseball players, <clears throat> or football players, or whatever sports you're, you love, right? We take priority in that. What about facts and information about public figures or celebrities? So much knowledge in the world. Even let's look at the context of Sunday school. We're in classes every Sunday for Sunday school. Now this year we have our VBS. How are we applying all these lessons in our daily life? This is something all of us need to think about. God gives each and every one of us the gift of wisdom. My friend, wisdom is not something which is just human made, but it is a gift that comes from God. And the fact that God gives it, what does that mean? God is wise. And so when God gives that gift to us, we need to treat that gift as a precious gift. We need to be able to receive it 
And when we receive it with an open heart, with an open mind, what happens? God works in us. We're a vessel and God works in us. It leads us to knowledge and understanding. It gives, it moves us. It inspires us. And we see that through the power of the Holy Spirit. By accepting Christ as our Redeemer and God as our Creator, we try to put together or we try to uh, practice what we learn through Scripture. Don't take, don't miss this opportunity, my friends. Because when we learn more, not only when we learn more about God, when we grow with Him, when we develop a strong relationship with Him, we, God will, the triune God will give us the power to discern. And what happens, naturally what happens, we, we fear Him. And it's not the human fear, like being scared of something, but rather it's a fear that comes out of our respect. When we stand in the presence of God, we are filled with awe because we love God, because we respect Him. And that's what happens when we embrace God, the triune God, in our day-to-day -day life. And that doesn't mean we can't do whatever we want. You know, uh, script remind, we're reminded that now the Lord is the Spirit and where He goes, there's freedom. So yes, there's freedom. God has given all of us a free will. But we need to be able to exercise that within God's purpose for each and every one of us. Friends, true wisdom comes from God. You know, the world will offer us so much wisdom, right? Through textbooks, through other sources, maybe the internet. But true wisdom comes from God. And that's one thing I want, that's one thing I want to mention to all of you this, this day. And that is, textbooks serve to inform. But the word of God serves to inspire. Textbooks serve to inform. But the word of God serves to inspire. Where's our relationship with scripture, with the word? And it doesn't mean that everything is going to be okay. When we receive that gift, that knowledge of God, it doesn't mean that everything is going to be okay. Right? All of us, we call ourselves Christians. Is life easy? I'm sure most of you said, no, it's not easy. We go through challenges in our day-to-day -day life. But when we accept the knowledge of God, when we accept scripture, we learn to look at the world in a new way, through the eyes of God, through the teachings of Christ, through his very own presence, and through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we see that in scripture. And we see that even after the ministry of Jesus Christ, we see that through the church, through the pouring of the Holy Spirit on the church, through the apostles and their ministry, and even in our ministry today. But we need to learn to humble ourselves and to trust on him and rely on him. Yes, we have this wisdom. We have this knowledge that is a gift of God. We need to learn to put to practice what God has given us. You know, we go to, we go to Sunday school, we go to VBS, our t parents, our achins, our dear ones teach us the word of God. Many of our dear ones are role models to us in the way of Christ. But sometimes we go through difficulties in our life, maybe in school, right? Maybe you're working hard, but you're just not getting the grades. Or maybe you're, you know, bullied at school or made fun of. Maybe you have peer pressure. Maybe uh, you have temptations, right, for different things, whatever it may be. Maybe wearing branded clothes or doing what is considered so-called popular. Friends, we need to tell the difference between what is right and wrong. And that's what happens when we receive wisdom. When we receive wisdom from God, He opens up our hearts and minds and allows us to discern between what is right and wrong. Always remember that Scripture reminds us that, see, sin is knocking at the door. And it's his desire is for you, but you shall overcome it. And that's what we need to do. We need to overcome temptation and sin. What matters is not the problems that we face, but how we face those problems and how we respond to them. We sin 
only after falling to temptation. But when God gives us the wisdom, he, God gives us the willpower to face and overcome whatever comes our way. Another thing I want to mention about wisdom is the fact that wisdom calls us to slow down. Right today, what do we do? We do things on impulse. Someone says something to us. We just uh, fire right back at them, right? The, I'm saying that in a more figurative sense, right? Someone makes fun of us. Someone says something hurtful to us. We try to repay them back with similar words. Is that what God is calling us to do? Or you see something, right? You had to make a decision. Sometimes you, we don't even think. We just make decisions so quickly. But friends, God calls us to slow down. Just look at the way people moved in the Bible. They, were, they travel slowly. And that's what you and me are called to do. When, when we're filled with the wisdom of God, when the Holy Spirit covers us, when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, our Redeemer, we will become more calm and learn not to do things on impulse. I know you have so much pressure in this world that people want an answer quickly. It's like going through a fast food restaurant, right? Do all of you eat fast food? Of course, I do not endorse fast food by all means. Uh, I, home cooked food is the best and the healthiest food. But let's say you go to a fast food restaurant, right? You're on and they're going through the drive through And if it takes more than a minute or two, we get, we get so agitated. We get so anxious and upset. We get so hungry, right? That's because we're, we're conditioned to, to do things on impulse, to do things very fast. But let me tell you, my friends, when you're filled with the wisdom of God, you slow down, you let go, and you learn to let God take care of the rest. Let go and let God take care of the rest. When you're on the spot, called to do something, to make a decision, slow down, breathe, think about what is going on, the situation, the variables, the outcomes. Spend time in silence, right? Scripture reminds us, be still and know that I am God. Be silent in the presence of God. Pray to him, Lord, what do you want me to do? What is your will? What do you want? This should be our prayer. And God will give us the knowledge. Sometimes we may get the answer immediately. Sometimes we may get the answer later. Sometimes we may not get the answer. But God has a purpose for each and every response to our request. But we need to use that God-given wisdom. Friends, take advantage of all the resources that you have. In 2020, we have so many resources to study God's word, to listen and to see how the triune God is working in and through our lives. But we need to learn to embrace scripture. We need to learn to be comfortable being in the presence of God. We need to learn to embrace the wisdom as we see in the Proverbs. And when we do so, God will work in and through us in so many special and different ways. When, let's look at the Bible, for example. We see so many ways in which God is working so powerfully, miraculously, yet mysteriously that God can work through you and me in the same way. But we need to grow in our wisdom and knowledge of God. And that knowledge and wisdom and understanding should allow us to grow in relationship with God. It's not just an intellectual exercise. You can't just know about the triune God. But we need to know the triune God personally. Let's do a recap. Wisdom. What does it do? It allows us to gain knowledge and understand. It is God's gift. It allows us to discern from what is right and wrong. We use our knowledge for God's glory. We need to slow down, be patient, breathe, be silent. Pray, Lord, what is your will? Let go, let God take care of the rest, and let God be our guide. Friends, there is growth in the knowledge of God, and that comes with personal relationship. No matter how many facts you know about the Bible, no matter how many memory verses you know, or you've memorized, no matter how well you do on the diocesan exam or your Sunday school exam. What is most important is your relationship with God. And that comes through wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and fear, which comes through the Word of God. I don't want to give you a homework assignment, but I know it's the summer, and I know all of you, many of you may be detesting homework, but I have a homework assignment for you today. 
And uh, that is, choose a favorite proverb from the book of Proverbs today. And when you get time, when you spend time with your family members, your siblings, your parents, or whoever's at your home, share that favorite proverb with them. And share with your parents why, and, and to share with them and tell them why you like this particular proverb and how it inspires you. I would like to thank our Achins of the Martha Mother Church Atlanta for inviting me to speak to you this morning and this day, and along with your church and Sunday school. And I wish you all the very best for this year's VBS. And I look forward to speaking to you again in just a few days. Again, take advantage of the learning, take advantage of the activities and songs and everything that you do. But above all, let the name of the triune God be glorified now and always, forever and ever. Amen. Hello, good morning, and welcome to Animal Planet, the show where we talk about crazy, cool, and weird animals that God has created. I'm your host, Joe, and I'm also your host, Joe, and it's just me. Now, we've got a crazy list of animals for you today. Starting off the pack, we've got the blue monkey. Let me get some oohs and ahs for the blue monkey. Ooh, the blue monkey. Ooh, let's start this off. Now, the blue monkey, the blue monkey isn't actually blue. Yes, you heard it here first. They're not actually blue, but they have some blue colors around their face, and that's just about it. That's the hot take for the day. They live on treetops and almost never come down, and they have large cheek pouches to store food in while they're away from the house. They work symbiotically with other animals, and that means that they give something to one animal, like gathering food, and then they get something in return from that animal, like protection. Ooh, let's give it up for the blue monkey. Ooh, yes. Moving on, we've got the tree hyrax. Let's give it up for the tree hyrax. Ooh, yes, ooh, the tree hyrax. Now, Joe, tell us a little bit about the tree hyrax. Certainly, Joe, I'm here to tell you about the tree hyrax. Now, these things look like good guinea pigs and they live in the dens of the trees. They stay on top of the trees and they never come down. And they have special rubbery suction cups on their feet so that they can stick to branches and makes it perfect for them as they live off the high ground. Now they sleep during the day and they're awake at night. That sounds a lot like my sleep schedule during quarantine. And they also make creepy screams at night and that's the way that they talk. That also sounds like me during quarantine. Now let's give it up for the tree hyrax. Woo! Yes, yes, yes. The final animal on our roster today is the bush baby. Joe, can you tell us a little bit about the bush baby? Sure, Joe. My name is Joe and I'm here to tell you a little bit about the bush baby. They live in the trees of Africa and they're awake mostly at night. And they have huge eyes that help them see clearly at night. They make lots of noises like a chatter, a cluck, a croak, a cry. Can everyone say that four times fast? Chatter, cluck, croak, cry. Chattel, cruck, croak, cry. Chattel, cruck, cluck, croak. I don't think I did it right, but that's okay. The bush baby can move very fast. An example of that is they can jump 30 feet in just seconds. That is crazy. That is huge. Finally, they have huge ears that help them hear and track bugs that they're going to eat. Wow, if I had huge ears, I could hear everything in the world. Let's give a round of applause to the bush baby. Woo, yes, the bush baby. And that about wraps up our day today. Let's remember that God has designed and created each animal for a very specific and very perfect purpose. And that is why he has given all of them gifts and abilities that others don't have. In the same way that we have been created to, to serve a specific purpose. That is all for today. This is Animal Joe from Animal Planet signing off.
good. Hello everyone. How's everyone today? I'm sure you all had a fun time today at our very first online VPS. Isn't it exciting? I am. Isn't it awesome that God made this happen? Did you guys enjoy uh, the praise and worship and the devotion and all the craft sessions? I'm sure you did. So today we learned that we need to be good listeners, especially when it comes to listening to God's word, the Bible. So before I pray, let's ask ourselves, do we have the ears to hear God's word and also do God's word? Let's pray. So when we pray, what do we do? We bow our heads and close our eyes. Proverbs 19.20 Listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. We thank you for being able to see, hear, touch, feel, and walk this morning. We pray that you provide a way for those who lack any of these. Thank you, for God, for the opportunity you gave to us to have online VBS. We thank and praise God for our dear ones who worked really hard to make this happen. We pray for our children. Bless each one of them, Father. Lord, help them to listen to you, Father, listen to your word, and live a life according to you, your statutes, Father. Lord, bless each one of them. May the things we have, you have revealed to us and the thoughts that we have shared dwell in our hearts and stir in us and action. Lord, we thank you for all that you have taught us today. Let your name be glorified in all this, and all that we have learned today begin to manifest in our life, that we do not be hearer only, but doer of your word as well. Lord, help us to always recognize that you are the God of all wisdom, and help us to have ears to hear and do according to your word. Lord, we also bring all our loved ones who are affected by the COVID-19. Lord, we pray that you help them, God. Touch them, Lord. Heal them, Father. Lord, we also pray for our frontline workers, our doctors, nurses, all the technicians, all the medical staff. Lord, we pray that you keep them safe, Father. Protect them from this virus, O oh Lord. Father, we pray for our church members. We pray for each and every one of them. We pray for families and as individuals. We pray that you bless them. We pray for all who are sick and going through different trials, O oh Lord. Please help them, Lord. We pray for our Ajuachan and his family. We pray for Skariya Varghisachan and his family, Lord. We pray for all our teachers, all our students, Father. We pray that you bless each one of them. And we pray that this VBS will be a blessing to each one of us. Lord, thank you for hearing our prayer. Be with us and help us. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. 